Hi there. Now, before we start part B, I'm assuming that you have worked your way through the video on part A. In part A, I drew this diagram here showing the forces acting on this uniform rod of mass m and length 2a. And we also discuss the forces acting on this hinge here where the rod was attached. I split it into two components, a horizontal component of x newtons and a vertical component of y newtons. And that y newtons force, by the way, could either act upwards or downwards. At this stage, we don't really know, okay? It's up to you whether you put it up or down. But uh, these are the forces essentially acting on the rod. And we found out that this force F was equal to 3amg cos theta all divided by B. Now for this part of the question, we're asked to find in terms of ABG, M and theta, the horizontal component of the force acting on the rod at A, in other words, X, Newtons, and the vertical component of the force acting on the rod at A, in other words, Y Newtons. And this is worth five marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this one and haven't done so, I'll just uh, give you a moment to pause the video. And when you come back, you can check your work solution against mine. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now in order to do this, what we've got to do is think about resolving now horizontally to get x and vertically to get y. And if we're going to resolve horizontally and vertically, then I need to split this force f into two components. So what I'll do is I'll draw a dotted line vertically upwards like so, and this angle in between f and the vertical, that's going to be the angle theta here. Okay, so mark that in as theta. So when it comes to getting x for part one, we're going to need to resolve horizontally. I'm going to resolve to the right, taking that as positive, okay, so that we get x as a positive value. So that would mean that we've got all of x acting to the right. Now obviously y, mg and this mg are perpendicular to this direction so they're not going to come into the equation. We need to think about f though. We can split f into the two components, one vertically and then there's this one out horizontally. And that will be f sine theta because it doesn't include the angle and it's going to be negative as well because it acts in the opposite sense to what we got here. So that's minus f sine theta. Now the rod is in equilibrium, so this resultant force must be equal to zero. So rearranging this then for x, if we add f sine theta to both sides, x equals f sine theta. Now we know what f is from part a, so we just need to substitute that in. So we get x equals f, which is 3amg cos theta divided by b, okay, and it's all multiplied by sine theta. So I'm just going to pop the sine theta in there. Okay, so that's our horizontal component. When it comes to part two, to get our vertical component, then I'm going to resolve vertically upwards. And if we do that, we've got all of y acting upwards. We've got the two mg's acting vertically downwards, so that's going to be minus 2mg. Okay. And then we've got the vertical component of f, so that's going to be f cosine theta and it's going to be in the positive sense, okay? So that'll be plus f cos theta. And again, because this is the resultant force and the rod is in equilibrium, that resultant force is going to be zero. So if I rearrange this now, making y the subject, we've therefore got y equals 2mg, and then minus f cos theta. And again, if we substitute for f now, we end up finally with therefore y equals the 2mg 
and then minus for f, we'll just copy that in, 3amg cos theta. And if we multiply it with this cos theta, might as well say cos squared theta, okay? And all of that is divided by b. And there you have our two components, x and y.